，宪兵部队全副武装，整排云豹装甲车。这是拱卫台北中枢的宪兵装部两三九营。中华民国总统蔡英文大年初一上午颁发加菜金，感谢过年轮值留守官兵，守护国家安全，勤勉维持高水准，做好战训准备，让民众对国军战力更有信心。两三九营是宪兵唯一的装甲部队，也是重要的首都卫戍部队。我要代表国人，感谢各位轮值的弟兄姐妹，在休息的时间，务必要打电话问候家人，向向家人拜年。一月二十日小年夜，两岸领导人都对民众发表新年谈话。习近平拜年时说：“要所谓坚定开展反分裂、反干涉重大斗争，牢牢把握两岸关系主动权。”被解读是向美国等支持台湾的国家发出警告。总统蔡英文拜年谈话毫不退让，面对中共军机军舰侵扰台湾，重申坚定维护台海和区域的和平稳定，拼经济、守主权、护和平。台湾的空军防空飞弹部队过年战备不停歇，透过想定目标实施战备演练，接获命令随即进入战术位置，将天宫三型飞弹防御系统发射架迅速展开，进入发射程序。国防部表示，自二十一日除夕上午六点起二十四小时，侦获中共军机十架次、中共军舰四艘次，持续在台湾海峡周边活动，没有逾越台海中线及西南空域。全年官兵均秉持战备无假期，并以备战不求战、应战不避战原则加强戒备，严密监控敌情。官兵表示，联合空中作战指挥中心则副单位追踪监视，企图接近领空的敌机目标。全年官兵二十四小时坚守岗位。新唐人亚太电视胡宗汉、张东旭，台湾台北报道。大年初一，即将率领内阁总辞的行政院长苏贞昌，从办公室出发，走访防疫指挥中心、行政院，感谢留守值班人员。在岗位上留守辛苦了，年啊，让你不好意思哦，设备来给你们加油，很好，感谢哦，好。让你辛苦了，加油！好，辛苦，继续加油，辛苦你们了，特别来感谢，继续加油，谢谢，加油，定一定，好，冲冲冲！辛苦了，辛苦了，辛苦了，辛苦两路，辛苦两路。苏贞昌感谢牺牲年假守护民众的所有人员。他初一在社群平台表示，虽然已经向总统请辞，但在总统任命新的行政院长之前，各部会首长、执勤的政府各单位都会继续坚守岗位。他也持续处理政务，确保在过年期间全国各机关运作顺利。总统秘书长有意愿接国旗吗？有传闻，内阁可能在二十六日大年初五交接。目前被媒体点名猜测，可能接任阁揆的人选包括前副总统陈建仁、前总统府秘书长苏家全、国安会秘书长顾立雄。陈建仁初一在社群平台发文，祝福每一位国人都能够相互宽恕、彼此包容，给自己带来心灵的自由，给台湾带来更多的平安和喜乐。我们尊重总统的安排与规划，甚至不排除也有黑马的可能啊。我们一起拭目以待。新唐人亚太电视胡宗汉、张东旭，台湾报道。The spread of COVID-19 in China has overwhelmed hospitals, flooded funeral homes with the dead. Body bags are selling at exorbitant prices, and cemetery prices have skyrocketed. The Chinese media rarely publishes truthful information about the pandemic situation, so the outside world can only learn about it through messages from the Chinese people. Someone recently said that more than 200 people had died in a village in China, and one netizen lamented, "How many households can a large village have? How many is 200 people? It's no different from a massacred village." On January 17th, a Twitter account Wenbei posted a notice that read, "Tragically, more than 200 people have died in a village." According to the comments on the posted video, netizen Jiang Shao said, "More than 200 people have died in our village." Someone replied, "You have tried to tell the truth. Thank you. You are a decent man. I believe what you say." A video shows a young man sadly saying, "This video can save many lives and can help you." 
Near the Lunar New Year, another heartbreaking thing happened around me. I witnessed a colleague who was healthy the other day suddenly passed away. The young man said that he thought this colleague had returned to his hometown to celebrate the new year, but did not expect that he had passed away. This colleague, 41 years old, was the latest COVID-positive person in the company, and he always said that he had good resistance, but in the end, he still couldn't escape. My colleagues, after more than 20 days of being positive, suddenly appeared with some sequelae, and so do I, he said. This young man added, what experts said cannot be completely trusted. It is not that I want to create confusion or worry. I share this to make people more careful. After recovering, more or less people will develop sequelae. Experts previously said that the 80 to 90 percent of patients had no symptoms, but now 80 to 90 percent have. They said that 80 to 90 percent have no sequelae after recovery, but now a lot of people have. According to Vision Times, some netizens replied, Our district has 350,000 people, but in one month, 4,000 people died. CCP bandits really kill people without blinking. One person worriedly said, the horror that is the next wave will be even more violent. How many people could survive? And Edison angrily says, How many households can a large village have? How much is 200 people? There is an old saying, a population dies together, asserting that something bad happened due to the whole population. If the CCP doesn't die, we Chinese will have no future. In addition, in Xinjiang Village, Changping District, Beijing, only 90 households and less than 300 people live, but so many excavators have to dig graves every day and night since too many people died. In this video, a large number of new graves can be seen. Evidence shows that the CCP deliberately downplayed the number of COVID deaths through leaving no trace. During the three years of the COVID-19 pandemic in China, the outside world doubted the official data published related to the pandemic. In particular, the number of deaths was said to be seriously underreported by the outside world. Reuters reporters found evidence of Chinese authorities downplaying and underreporting of deaths from the pandemic when interviewing frontline medical workers in Beijing, Shanghai, and other places. A doctor at a major public hospital in Shanghai told reporters, We have stopped identifying COVID-19 deaths since the lockdown was lifted in December. It makes no sense to do so because most people test positive. Six other doctors from public hospitals in various parts of China told Reuters they received verbal instructions to try not to attribute the cause of death to COVID-19 and see it as their policy. Some victims' relatives also said that the death certificate did not say COVID-19. Some infected people also said that they have obvious respiratory infection symptoms when taken to the hospital, but the hospital did not perform nucleic acid testing. Several other doctors said that the notices and directives came from the government, but no one knew from which department. Reuters also noted that once such politically sensitive directives are communicated in China, they often adopt a so-called no-trace approach, which means issuing no-trace and no-record directives. The independent health forecasting firm Airfinity on January 19th estimated the number of deaths in China was over 10 times the official figure of China. Meanwhile, China disclosed on January 14 that it recorded nearly 60,000 COVID-related fatalities since the country lifted its strict zero-COVID policy. However, this figure is only from hospitals across the country. According to Airfinity, it estimated the death toll in China since December was at 608,000. But the figure is changing too fast. As of January 20th, it was 708,000 cases, rising 100,000 cases in only a day. Scenes of overcrowded hospitals and crematoriums point to far more deaths than those included in official data. Reuters cited government data reporting that Shantou City in Guangdong province recently planned to buy an emergency purchase of two cremation ovens. Funeral homes in Guangdong, China's most populous province, spent over 130 million yuan between December 7th and January 6th on various items. A funeral service center in Jigong City, Sichuan province, saw its supply was almost exhausted. Therefore, it wanted to buy around 196,000 liters of diesel, increasing 40% from its annual average. A funeral home in Anqing, a prefecture-level city in the southwest of Anhui province, also bought new assets. It spent around 1.6 million yuan, about $236,000, between December 19th and January 4th on two large cars to transport coffins. At the same time, it also expanded its power supply and freezers to store corpses. A tender document on December 19th wrote, My organization's original freezer cannot meet existing business needs and urgently needs to purchase 30 single-drawer freezers now. Jiaxiao is a county-level city under Fuyang City, Anhui Province, made a similar purchase two weeks ago. It's tender red. In recent times in Jiaxiao City, the cremation business volume has increased. The funeral hall's remains for refrigerator cannot meet the current unit demand. 
now need to purchase 10 units of all-in-one three-door freezers for a total investment of about 400,000 yuan. Reuters reviewed public documents reporting that Hangtai, a manufacturer of incinerators in Chandang province, saw its income soaring. Hangtai said that its 40,000 square meter plant was at full production capacity, working overtime 24 hours to meet the urgent procurement needs of customers. On December 29th, Hangtai overcame eight competitors to win one of the biggest bids in Guangzhou City, Guangdong province. The deal was valued at 23 million yuan, almost $3.4 million, and more than half of that would be spent on eight incinerators. No funeral home cited the rising number of COVID deaths as a reason to purchase these items. But funeral home spending on cremated items show that China's death toll is not small. We really don't know how significant the number is. Hello. <laughs> Cookie 他不愛吃他就這樣挖。